Ja, nu går jag om Guxislas. Jag är från Klaoitis. Emily Klaasman Uwaka. I'm from the Klaoitis nation. My um, Kwakwala name is Guxislas. And my other name is Emily. And that's what I go by at the school. None of the kids call me Mrs. or Miss. <clears throat> I um, I teach in the Aboriginal education for the school district. That's my main job right now. I teach from what was grade four through uh, grade twelve. Well, I, the in between middle school. I don't do middle school. Well, first in the elementary school, I think that we really want kids to get become aware of um, another language group that belongs to this this community. Um, I teach both First Nations and non First Nations kids. Um, they're all they always are excited. Um, they learn the sounds because our sounds are really important. The sounds of Kwakwala, Likwala is really important. Uh, high school kids, my goal is there is to get them to be speaking more and being able to write like full sentences and um, yeah, using the language uh, more fluently. Well, <clears throat> each, one, each one of my classes are different because they um, in one of my classes the kids are learning how to put uh, the vowels and consonants together. It's kind of like seems like it might be boring, but they seem to really like it. Um, another class we were we made um, cardboard bentwood boxes so they could learn about what how we start our stuff. Um, and the other class, oh, the other class we're doing, he likes the their teacher. I work with the teachers to make sure that sort of follows the um, their program that they're doing. And we're going to do stuff like um, a little play on the Kwakwala, maybe a little Kwakwala story. And the kids are going to play act it out. So there's different ones. And the high school kids, well everything I can do to get them interested. <laughs> I get first block and it's, they're pretty tired in the morning. Well, I really observe a lot I, because I'm like a, I say I'm a vagabond teacher. I go from one class to the other, but I do observe the kids, um, watch them to see what they're learning, how, if they're interested, if they're losing interest. I really do a lot of observing. Um, in the high school kids, I do, they do quizzes, but again, I observe them, I get them to practice sentences, putting in, you know, putting in nouns and verbs into the right places. Um, Kwakwala's are really, well, it's like any other language, it's complicated, it has lots, lots to learn. But mostly it's observation. And then the little kids I've taught, before I used to teach the, um, the kindergarten kids too, and they they come up to me and tell me all the things that they remember when they're in, now in grade three, grade four. They usually they they there's like a little bit more of a they they sit up a little taller or they stand a little taller. They're a little bit prouder. I had one a kid I remember from I did middle school once. He was like when he first started coming into class, he had his head down. He would not take off his coat. He would not even make any eye contact. By the end of the, my term with him, he had taken off his jacket and he was participating. And this child had uh, what he called a, um, he, he had a really good memory. Like he could see pictures and he'd remember all the words, but no one had ever noticed that in him because they didn't find him, they didn't get him to, they didn't reach him and he really enjoyed hanging out in Kwakwala class. So he's like one of the one of the kids I remember because he was so it was a really big change from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to him later on, but he was it was really amazing to see it, the change in that boy. And some of my other kids are like that too and they go, hmm, there's more to Kwakwala than I just yeah. I guess what I'm hoping is that some of the kids are going to follow along with and keep going with Kwakwala and then go to school and become teachers and come back home and teach it. Because, you know, eventually I'll have to stop working. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. The biggest challenge has been curriculum. Uh, 
we've been as people have been doing this for 20 years but no one has really like saved stuff or um you know or shared stuff some people didn't want to share stuff but you know we've uh, i belonged to the buck and geller group when i first started and we created alphabets and everything that we think of and that and i use that now in my teaching at the school district a lot of the stuff that created in the buck and geller language group so yeah, that's the biggest challenge is, is creating curriculum so that it, you know, when you start at kindergarten, you're working and you build all the way, all the way to grade 12. My, my own thought is by grade 12, they should be able to write a decent paragraph or two in the language if they have been going all the way. So that's, that's still my goal. I still think that they can do it. I guess like the kindergarten, the one they're going to be starting has had a, there's been a lot of people wanting to put their kids in it. And they, they were going to limit it to 18, I think. So there is more than 18 people that have put their name in. That might be a big, that might be a big challenge. Um, I don't know about the high school because it's my first year at the high school. Um, and in the elementary schools, I was going from classroom to classroom. So they're always going to be there. The children are always going to be there. But what I find about the children, doesn't matter whether they're First Nations or non-First Nations. They just enjoy learning. And, and if you make it fun, it, it's, it, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. They just they, they want to learn. And if, I guess if I'm doing it correctly, I guess because they want to learn. So, um, yeah. There's lots of stories that they that we uh, <clears throat> that I tell, and I tell them differently to different groups. We do have some uh, stories about our, you know, the culture and how things began. Um, yeah, it just I I t I, t I teach differently than a lot of people. I am I one of my friend called me. I was organic. She says I'm an organic kind of teacher. It depends on what how the children are behaving, but I like telling them some of our legends. But I tell them, you know, depending on how old they are, how how deep I go into, you know, because some of them are kind of spooky or scary. Um, but I think some of the stories will they get their gets their minds working, or even I tell them stories about how I grew up, and that gives them a different perspective on how their lives could be or why their lives are the way they are maybe you know I I incorporate a lot of other things um, anything I can think of that will help them to be the best they can be and just to know it's okay you don't have to be a dancer to be corporate talk you can be any you can be anything you want to be right so just about a year ago just about one year ago, uh, this amazing lady named Dee Cullen phones me up and says, do you want to go to Korea? And I went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, she convinced me that I should go to Korea. And we went to Korea and we started this little project. It is a, an app. It's, been a, um, it's an app for to teach kids. Ba basically, a kindergarten, uh, and el older people can do it too if they don't have any basis. So the beginning part of it is doing the alphabet. This is a little program that kids can um, play. And then you choose which one is. And it shows the kids that they picked the right one. So again, you choose, the kids can choose the right one. So I'm just going to push the wrong one just to show what happens. So this kind of lightly tells you, you picked the wrong one, picked the right one, and there you go. But the Koreans were learning English. So this is, they, they did it into an English, uh, from Korean to English, and they had to change Korean English to Kwa Kwa. <laughs> It was pretty interesting. I'm just going to show the part of the review. And so when you're learning our language, there's lots of different parts in your mouth that you have to say it properly. And that's why this is the cool part. It actually talks about... Ah, uh, I assume. Where you might uh, say it. Ah, uh, I assume. Ah. Uh. So that's our first part. So then you would say, I assume. So that is... 
our little program. So right now it has just the alphabet and we're waiting for the story to get downloaded, which is coming very soon. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're yeah. really proud of this little program. All of our little children in our preschools um, have one of these to learn with. I mean, we know technology isn't a good thing for children, but I think when you use it to teach, I think it's a little different, but yeah, yeah. so we're really happy. And then the story is done by a young lady that she just graduated high school last year and she did the story she did the voice for and she had been in Quackwalla program she did the voice for Sally and then we had another young fellow that we work with that's one of Dana's relatives um, Brody did the um, dragon's voice and then Dana did some voices I did a few voices it was just we had quite a few people that participated in it so I think it will be helpful because if we don't have anybody to teach, it will be useful for the kids. It's not going to just be a toy, you know, that they play. It's going to be something they'll actually learn from. So that's yeah. one of our projects. Yeah. Many. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I never really thought about it. I think it's a whole thing. It's everything. Um, when I teach, I don't just teach Kwakwala. I teach about history. And if there's non-First Nations kids in my class, I also teach them about their own indigenous history because a lot of people that came from Europe, they had their own indigenous places. Just because a lot of times kids start to feel, well, what about me? I'm not important, right? <clears throat> so everybody gets to think about where they originated from. Um, I think that's part of indigenous, it's inclusive. It's not, you just, you just don't focus on the one group. you got to bring everybody in. And if you have non-First Nation and First Nations kids working together, they, they, everyone's got to have, um, everybody's got to feel good about themselves. So I think that's what First Nations education is about me, or Aboriginal education is. It's inclusive. It doesn't leave anyone behind. Language is really, uh, every language is important. Uh, language... Uh, it's a, it's a picture, you know, like every word is a picture. It's what I, at least that's what I try to teach my, the kids, is that every word that we speak, the, it, there's a picture that goes with it. And when you start losing that picture, the, you know, the world gets smaller, and it's, there's not, it's, not, it's not as brilliant as it could be. And with Kwakwala, there's some amazing words, and I went, when I, the more I study it, I went, why would we ever give up such an amazing language? Because it has brilliance to it. Um, other languages from around the world have the same problem, is that um, that brilliance of their language has been lost because it's been overcome by English. But English also has some brilliance to it. If we could be more multilingual people, it, we would be just so much more amazing, I think. But that's just how I feel about it language. Well, I certainly hope we have an immersion, completely immersion school, like at least to grade five. I think we can do it. But yeah, you know, just, yeah, I can survive that long. <laughs> um, yeah, um, both, yeah, Dana and I both, we've, we've thought about it for a long time, and this um, immersion kindergarten is just the beginning. So, I think that it's possible. I think it's possible to become, you know, like at least a grade five, just like French. <laughs>